everyone, I'm Sari. And I'm Kayla. And this week, instead of pre-Shabbos circle time, since today is Tisha B'Av, we thought we would do some Tisha B'Av story time. So we hope you enjoy all the stories that we read for you today. And I hope your parents have a very easy fast. King Solomon and the Bee King Solomon, or King Shlomo, was the wisest and smartest king of his days. Not only could the king speak every language in the world, he could also talk to the animals. The king lived in a big palace surrounded by a magnificent garden where beautiful flowers grew. When it was hot in the palace, King Solomon was in the habit of taking his afternoon nap under the shade of a broadleaf fig tree in his garden. One day, while the king was sleeping under the tree, a young bee flew into the garden. It flew from one pretty flower to another, happily drinking the nectar. When it had had enough, the bee decided to rest and landed on, of all things, the king's nose. This tickled the king. Half asleep, he raised his hand. The hand frightened the bee, and the bee stung the king's nose. Ouch! The pain woke King Solomon up. As his nose became swollen and the pain grew worse, his rage mounted. What insect dared to sting the king's nose? He shouted. As his nose became redder and grew to be as big as a cucumber, he commanded with fury, All bees, hornets, wasps, and flies appear immediately before me. From every hive and nest, from near and far, swarms of bees, hornets, wasps, and flies flew in a panic to the king's garden. They were all buzzing in confusion when King Solomon shouted, Silence! A hush fell upon all. Pointing to his nose, the king roared, Who among you dared to do a thing like this to the king? Nobody moved. Nobody buzzed. Who among you dared to do a thing like this to the king? Solomon repeated. Finally, a small bee flew straight to him and said, I am the one, my lord, my king. Before the king had time to get angry and punish the bee, it pleaded, Oh, my lord, my king, please don't be angry. I am a young and foolish bee. I have not yet learned the difference between a flower and a nose, or between one nose and another, especially the nose of my lord, my king, a nose with a rose-like fragrance and a banana-like grace. As the bee talked, a faint smile grew on King Solomon's face. The bee gathered more courage and continued, I have sinned, my lord, my king, and I am sorry. Do not be angry with me. Do not punish me. Who knows? Maybe one day, my lord, my king, I will be able to repay you with a favor. King Solomon burst out laughing. You, a little creature like you, will repay the king? He laughed so much that he could not talk. He just motioned to the little bee and all the other insects to fly away. When the king stopped laughing, his servant put ointment on his nose, and soon the pain and swelling went away. Before long, the king forgot all about the bee. One day, the queen of Sheba came to the palace to visit King Solomon. She had heard how smart the king was, and in order to test him, she had brought with her all sorts of difficult riddles, puzzles, and questions. One by one, she presented them to the king, and one by one, he solved them. The time came for the last test. The queen brought to the throne room several of her young maidens. Each of them held a bouquet of beautiful flowers. Before you, O King Solomon, in the hands of the maidens are bouquets of flowers. Only one of them is made up of real flowers. The rest of the flowers are made by human hands. Do, O king, tell me which is which. The man-made flowers looked so perfect, so much like the flowers of the fields and gardens, that the king could not tell them apart. He looked and looked some more and still could not tell them apart. The king was ready to give up when he heard a faint buzz outside the window. He was the only one who heard it. When the king saw a little bee, his eyes lit up. Open the window, he told the servant. Be quick. The window was opened. Without anybody else noticing, the bee flew in and headed straight for one bouquet. The king smiled and pointed at the bouquet where the bee settled. 
That is the bouquet of real flowers, he exclaimed, to the amazement of the Queen of Sheba and her maidens. And that is how the little bee repaid the king. Do unto otters, a book about manners. <coughs> Excuse me. Do de do do de donk. Hello, Mr. Rabbit. We're your new neighbors, the otters. This end up. Oh, it's harder to read because it's upside down. Hmm. Otters, otters, my new neighbors are otters. What if we don't get along? Pesky otters, lousy rabbits. His booger. Blah, blah, blah. Spit. Mr. Rabbit, I know an old saying. Do unto otters as you would like otters to do unto you. What does that mean? Simply means treat otters the same way you'd like otters to treat you. Treat otters the same way I'd like otters to treat me. Hmm, how would I, how would I like otters to treat me? Well, I'd like otters to be friendly, a cheerful hello, howdy neighbor, a nice smile, ding, and a good eye talk, contact, blah, 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 are all part of being friendly. Friendliness is very important after to me, especially after my last neighbor, Mrs. Grr, Grr, that's Mrs. Grr. Voted meanest neighbor six years in a row. I'd like others to be polite. They should know when to say please. Yoo-hoo, Mr. Rabbit, would you please return my ball? Pretty please with carrots on top? Hee-hee, <laughs> carrots. Would you like to, me to stop singing you? Yes, please. I can say please in five languages. Por favor, Spanish. S'il vous plaît, French. Beat. German, Kadusai, Japanese, Bavakasha, Hebrew. Say the magic word, and I'll turn these clams into a million dollars. Magic rhyme rhymes with this, and you can see the mouse hungry for the cheese, and that frog is saying impressive. You should. They should know and say thank you. Dear Mr. Rabbit. Thank you very much for returning my ball. You must have returned a lot of balls before. You make it look so easy. Balls are sure bouncy and rolly, but I'll try to keep it under control next time. Sincerely. Nice peek. Thanks. Would you like me to sing you now? No, thank you. Then please take my business card and call me when you're ready. I can say thank you in five languages. Gracias, Spanish. Merci, French. Thanks, Sosian, German. Arigato, Japanese. Toda, Hebrew. Did you say please or cheese? The mouse looks very excited. Superb! And that frog sings. They should know when to say, excuse me. Excuse me, burp. Excuse me, oh, Mr. Otter, excuse me, Mr. Me, I need to run and check something. Excuse me. I can say excuse me in five languages. Dispense them, Spanish. Pardonnez-moi, French. Extense, Japanese. Sumi Sasen, Japanese. Sticha, Hebrew. Excuse me for interrupting your reading, but I heard you say please, not cheese. Otters should be honest. That means they should keep their promises. My word is as good as gold. Fish. Not lie. I never lie. It makes my whiskers itch. Not che cheating makes my whiskers itch too. I wonder if I should go see a doctor. I'd like Otter to be considerate. Being a good listener. I had a nightmare. Asked before borrowing something. May I? Not littering. Being patient. Please wait. Caring for creatures big and small. Opening a door for someone after you. Being on time. 
respectively. Good afternoon, Mr. Stuck. Hello, dearie. Helping neighbors untangle ears. <laughs> it wouldn't hurt others to be kind. Everyone ex appreciates a kind act, no matter how bad it smells. Oh, what's the word cooperate? Others should cooperate. Did someone just say operate? Cooperate. We all work together. We know how to cooperate. I see otters like to play. I hope they know how to play fair. Otters also for play fair. Be a good sport. Play by the rules. Take turns. Include everyone, even bees. You won. Come on, you two. Wee! I'd like if we could share things like our favorite books. Harry Otter. Goldilocks and the Three Hairs. Our favorite activities, Otter Totter. Go fish. Okay. <laughs> our favorite treats. Maybe not the treats. That looks like carrot pizza. And that looks like fish cupcakes. Blah. I hope otters won't tease me about my doody doo song and my extra large swim fins and my bad hair days. I hope otters won't tease anyone about anything. Teasing is mean. It's the worst. It's worse than having a clam snap shed on your nose. <laughs> like that guy here. I think otters should apologize when they do something quick. I'm sorry I used the ear as a tissue. I hope they can be forgiving when I do something wrong. I'm sorry I called you snotter. Oh, you. That's how I'd like otters to treat me. You see, Mr. Rabbit, I told you it was simple. Right, just do what you do into otters as you would have otters do what you do into you. Do what you do, do what you do, do what you do, do what you do. Home sweet home, Mr. Rabbit tips. Joha makes a wish. The day was hot and the road was long. Joha was walking to Baghdad. He hoped to study with the great rabbi and teacher, Sadia Gaon. Rabbi Sadia had translated the Torah into Arabic so that those who spoke the Arabic language could read and understand God's word. Joha stopped to rest in the shadow of a ruined wall. This shade feels good, Joha said to himself. Joha leaned against the wall. The old bricks gave way. He fell backward and landed on top of a sealed jar that had been hidden in the wall. I wonder what's in this jar, Joha said. He broke the wax seal. Inside, he found a stick wrapped up in a parchment scroll. Joha unrolled the scroll. The writing on it was written in an ancient alphabet. I wish I could read this, Joha said. Suddenly he could. Stranger, you have found a wishing stick. Use it wisely. It can make your dreams come true. Underneath the message was a signature, Shlomo ben David. Shlomo ben David? That means Solomon, son of David, King Solomon. Joha knew that Solomon, king of Israel, was a just ruler and the wisest man who ever lived. He was also a master of magic. God gave Solomon the power to command demons. This wishing stick must have belonged to King Solomon. Let me try it. What will I wish for? He looked down at his worn out sandals. I could use some new shoes. Joha held the wishing stick in his hand. He closed his eyes. I wish I had a pair of red leather slippers. He opened his eyes. He looked down at his feet. He did not have a pair of red leather slippers. He did not have a pair of worn out sandals either. His sandals had disappeared. Joha howled with anger. What kind of wishing stick is this? Did Solomon trick me? I wished for slippers and now I don't even have sandals. I will have to walk all the way to Baghdad in my bare feet. Joha glared at the stick in his hand. You wicked stick, I wish you would disappear. Instead of disappearing, the stick stuck tight to his hand. 
This made Joha even angrier. I lost my sandals because of this stick. Now I can't get rid of it. He continued down the road to Baghdad, muttering to himself while trying to shake off the stick. You evil stick, you miserable stick, you unworthy stick. Make way, make way. A troop of the sultan's guards trotted past. A little donkey followed behind their horses. Joha hurried to get off the road. Those guards are nothing but bullies. It's best to have nothing to do with them, Joha grumbled to himself as the guards rode by. Still, I wish I had a donkey like that to carry me the rest of the way to Baghdad. The guards reined in their horses. Did you hear that? Their leader said. This fellow wishes he had a donkey to carry. Let's make his wish come true. No, no, cried Joha. That's not what I said. But the guards were having too much fun to listen. They made Joha bend over while they lifted the donkey onto his back. Down the road they all went, with Joha following behind, carrying the donkey. Everybody on the road stopped to stare. They'd often seen a man riding a donkey. How often does anyone get to see a donkey riding a man? Hee-haw, hee-haw. The donkey brayed and kicked. The poor animal didn't like being carried any more than Joha liked carrying her. When they arrived at the city gate, the sultan's guards allowed Joha to put the donkey down and go on his way. Everything I've said so far has gotten me into trouble. It's King Solomon's fault. That stick doesn't work right. From now on, I'm not going to say another word to anyone, Joha vowed as he entered the city. He hadn't gone far when he encountered a procession coming down the main street. It was led by the sultan himself. Long life to the sultan, everyone cried as the procession went by. Everyone except Joha. The guards noticed his silence. What's the matter with you? Why won't you wish our sultan a long life? I've had terrible luck with my wishes today, Joha explained. I'm afraid that if I wish the sultan a long life, something dreadful will happen to him. The sultan overheard Joha talking. Don't be afraid, the sultan said. If you don't want to wish me a long life, you can wish for something else. Wish for something small. That will be enough. The sultan pointed to a tiny wart on the end of his nose. This wart has been bothering me for a week. I'm tired of it. Wish it to go away. I'd rather not, Joha said. Perhaps sitting in the dungeon will change your mind, the sultan asked. No, Joha replied. He took a deep breath. Holding tight to the wishing stick, he said, I wish the wart on the sultan's nose would disappear. No sooner had he said those words than the tiny wart began to grow. It grew until it was the size of a grape. Then it split into two. The wart kept growing and splitting until it resembled a bunch of purple grapes hanging from the sultan's nose. The guards began to shout, This man has bewitched the sultan. Seize him. Off with his head. The guards reached for Joha, but he slipped away and ran. The sultan's guards chased him through the winding streets, all the way to the Dar al-Yahud, the city's Jewish quarter. Joha couldn't run much farther on his aching bare feet. Quickly, he turned down an alley. He saw the entrance to a shop beneath an awning. An old man sat in front, reading a book. Joha ran up to him. Hide me from the sultan's guards, he pleaded. In here, the old man said. He lifted the lid of a chest. Joha climbed inside. The old man closed the lid. None too soon, the sultan's guards swarmed in the alley. Did you see a man go by? They asked the shopkeeper. He carried a stick and wasn't wearing any shoes. I haven't seen anyone like that, the old man said. The guards moved on. The old man helped Joha out of the chest. What is this all about, he asked. Joha described everything that had happened to him from the moment he had found the wishing stick in the jar. All my misfortunes have come from this stick, Joha wailed. Would that I had never set eyes on it. A wishing stick, the shopkeeper exclaimed. Now that is something rare. King Solomon is said to have owned one. May I see it? Joha held out the stick, which was still stuck to his hands. No wonder you're having bad luck, the old man, who was really Sadia Gaon himself, told him. The Sefer Shlomo HaMelech, the book of King Solomon talks about wishing sticks and other magical things. You're holding the stick upside down. The notched end belongs on the top. If the stick is upside down, 
Your wishes will be upside down too. What should I do? Joha asked. Turn the stick and make a wish. Joha turned his wrist so that the notched end was at the top. I wish this stick would fall from my hand, he said. The stick clattered to the ground. Joha stretched his fingers. He picked up the stick, the right way this time, and said, I wish I had my old sandals back. His sandals suddenly appeared on his feet, as dusty and worn as if he had never taken them off. The wishing stick is a wonderful thing if you know how to use it, said the old man. However, before you make any more wishes, you need to go back to the sultan and fix his nose. It is the right thing to do. Joha agreed. He thanked the old man and walked towards the palace. He snuck by the guards and crept into the throne room. The sultan was looking in a mirror and clutching his nose. By now, his wart looked like a whole harvest of grapes. You, the sultan cried when he saw Joha. Look what you've done to me. I've come to fix it, said Joha. He held the wishing stick with the notched end up and said, I wish the wart on the sultan's nose would disappear. The wart vanished. The sultan's nose was smooth again. Everyone congratulated Joha. The sultan was especially pleased. Is that really a wishing stick? May I see it? He asked. Joha handed over his wishing stick. I've always wanted to own a wishing stick, the sultan said. Now I can add this one to my treasures. He gave the wishing stick to one of his servants. Put this stick in my private chamber. I will be there shortly. He stroked his beard. What should I wish for? But, cried Joha, he had never meant to give the sultan his wishing stick. I see what you want, the sultan said. You'd like a reward in return, that's fair. What can I give you? How about a donkey? Yes, a donkey will do. He ordered his guards to bring a donkey from his stables and give it to Joha. It turned out to be the same donkey that Joha had carried all the way to Baghdad. Well, donkey, Joha said as he climbed onto the donkey's back, I lost my wishing stick and I never got to meet Rabbi Sadia, but at least I have you. I carried you once. It is only fair that you carry me now. Together they rode away. As they passed through the streets, Joha asked the donkey, Donkey, do you think I should go back and tell the sultan he has to hold the stick the right way? Hee-haw, the donkey brayed. I agree, said Joha. He can figure it out for himself. But he never did. The end. Maddie's Fridge When Sophia and Maddie played at the park, they stretched their toes to the sky, they climbed to the top of the ladder, and flew up the end of the slide. They stayed until the buildings grew long shadows, and even the taxis stopped honking. Let's play on the climbing wall, said Maddie. No way, said Sophia. I can't reach. Yes way, Maddie scooted up to the top of the wall. Your turn. Sophia put a foot on the rock and got screech. She couldn't read the next hold. Sophia's stomach growled. I give up. Let's get a snack. No way, Maddie said. Let's stay here. Yes way. Sophia ran to Maddie's building and raced up the stairs. Wait, Maddie ran after her. Maddie was the best climber, but Sophia was the fastest runner. When Sophia swung open the door, Maddie said, What have you got? We have milk. Maddie said, I'm saving it for Ryan. He's still little. Why doesn't your mom go to the store? asked Sophia. She doesn't have enough money. But what if he got hungry? We have some bread. Maddie said, I guess I'll go home and eat. Sophia said, Please don't tell anyone. Maddie said, Okay, promise? I promise. Sophia ran home past the bookstore, the grocery store. The sun went down behind the buildings and took all the colors with it. Good things and mom, dinner is almost ready. Louise was wrestling on, on the floor with Pepito. Sophia opened the refrigerator door. 
pizza peaked inside. Sophia's fridge was full of milk, eggs, tortillas, and cheese, lettuce, jam, salsa, tofu, and even half a can of dog food. Here you go, Mom said. Sophia and Louis each had a plate of fish and rice. Mom had a plate of fish and rice. Even Puppy had a bowl of dog food with a little bit of fish and rice. Mm -hmm. Maddie and Ryan had some bread and a small carton of milk. Sophia couldn't tell Mom she had to keep her promise to Maddie. Not fish again, Louise said. I want cheesy pizza bombs. Cheesy pizza bombs are a treat, said Mom. Fish is a good source of protein. It's fish good for kids. Asked Sophia, yes, Mom's mom. Fish is perfect for kids. That night, Sophia had an idea. Yuck, Maddie said the next day. Oh, Sophia said, double yuck. Fish may be good for kids, but fish is not good for backpacks. So Sophia and Maddie raced to the climbing wall. Sophia got there first, but Maddie scrambled to the top of the wall. Sophia, street eat. Eat and screeched, stretched and stretched. Keep trying, Maddie said. You'll get it. I can't, Sophia. Jump down. It's too high. That night, Sophia and Luis, Mom ate frittita. The pizza had dog with a little bit of frittita. Maddie and Ryan saw the empty refrigerator, so Sophia couldn't ask for it. That would try. She would. That would break her promise. She had to try again. Are eggs good for kids? Sophia asked. Not as good as cheesy pizza bombs, said Lewis. Cheesy pizza bombs are a treat, said Mom. Eggs are good for you. After dinner, Sophia packed eggs for Maddie and Ryan. Yucks and money. Double yucks, Sophia. Egg may be good for kids, but eggs are not good for backpacks. <laughs> Sophia and Maddie raced to the climbing wall. Sophia won again, but Maddie shot past her at the top of the wall. Sophia grabbed on one hold, reached for the next, and came down with a thump. That happens sometimes, Maddie called. This is impossible, Sophia said. Keep trying, Maddie said. You'll get it. That night, Sophia, Louise, and Mom had burritos. Pepito had to talk with a little bit of a burrito. Maddie and Ryan saw the empty fridge. Sophia wished she hadn't promised Maddie. Are burritos good for kids? As Sophia asked. Burritos are very good for you, Mom said. Not as good as Louise started to say. You should pay attention to your nutrition like your sister. The next morning, Sophia put two long burritos in her back in her backpack along with tortillas, beans and cheese and even some milk. Oh no thanks, Maddie said Haven't you looked, Sophia? It isn't is it fish? Maddie asked. No, is it eggs? No, is it grass? I don't know. Sophia Maddie shook the backpack. Something sloshed. Let's look together. One, two, three, go. Burritos are good for kids and good for backpacks too. Do you want some milk, Sophia? Thanks. But I'll save the milk for Ryan. Sophia and Maddie raced to the climbing wall. Sophia tried to climb. You can do it, Maddie said. Take my hand. Woohoo! I made it to the top, Sophia said. We're the tallest kids in the park, Maddie said. Thanks for helping me, Maddie. I couldn't have done it alone. Maddie shrugged. That's what friends are for. After they finished playing, Sophia walked back to the bookstore and the grocery store. Her own fridge was full of milk and juice and chicken and yogurt and bread and carrots and even half a can of dog food. She thought and thought. Maddie's fridge only had two tortillas 
a cup of beans, a bit of cheese, a little more milk than before. She didn't want to break her promise, but she couldn't leave Maddie alone. Sophia told Mom she hoped Maddie wouldn't be mad. I'm glad you told me, said Mom. Let's see what we can do together. They loaded grocery bags with milk, flour, chicken, carrot, sugar, oil, and even frozen meat and vegetables. Lewis pulled his cheese pizza bomb out of the freezer. He thought and thought some more. Then he put his cheese pizza bomb in Maddie and Ryan's bag for a treat, he said. Look, the pizza's trying to give dog food to them. At Maddie's apartment, the moms talked. Luis and Ryan played. Sophia and Maddie ran to the park. You broke your promise, Maddie said. I'm sorry, said Sophia. Are you glad? A promise is important, friend, she said. You're more important, said Sophia. I want you to have milk, too. Maddie smiled. Are we still friends, Sophia asked. Always, Maddie added. Double always, Sophia said. Cheesy pizza bomb, Lewis yelled. Our moms made cheesy pizza bombs for a treat. Sophia and Maddie raced up the stairs. Sophia slowed down so they could run together. That's what friends are for. The end. I hope you enjoyed the story. See you next week for Prince Shabbos Circle Time.